today is a very special and different video. It's all about problem solving while painting paper and you get to decide how it goes. Now, the other day I fell in love with the colors that I used in this small piece that I made for the 100 day project. I decided that I would use these colors in a large painting and boy, am I glad I filmed it. This project is a lesson in problem solving 101 and you're sitting in the front row to see it all. I'm Jackie Bernardi and welcome to my studio. So I'm using the same block of watercolor paper that I used in last week's video. You can see the painting on that pin board behind me. The video is linked to in the description below, but I loved this paper. I loved the size of it. It was just the right size where I could make big sweeping movements with my hands, which I really enjoy doing, but it was also still small enough that I could actually film it for you. So I am going to jump right into this. And what I'm doing right now is I'm laying down a dark background and that, that's Van Dyke Brown fluid acrylic and Payne's Gray Fluid Acrylic. Sometimes I just like to have a very dark base to paint over. It just gives a different quality than if I just started with light and I just wanted to see what that would do. So if you're new here, I'm all about experimenting and <laughs> today's painting is proof of that. So uh, I'm just moving this around with a catalyst wedge I'm liking the lined patterns uh, underneath where the Payne's Gray settled into the paper and dried a little before I started moving it so you can see texture in there. There's a lot of texture happening right now. And I'm just taking off the excess and putting it just on a side sheet of newsprint. I always love having a side sheet around to offload extra paint can be used later in collage and so on. This here is Taylor's chalk and I'm just getting some line work down. I like the squiggles, it's fun. This chalk is water soluble. So uh, I'm spraying a little bit of water on it and moving that those marks around, making it a little smudgy, a little schmeary, which I love. And um, that's just for visual interest. And I'm not sure that that will show in the final piece at all, but I will know it's there and I enjoy doing that. I enjoy making the squiggles. So although green gold was not in that original painting, that little tiny piece that I did for the 100 day project, I do like green gold. And so I thought I would apply it over this really dark base just to see what would happen. Um, it's quite bright as you can see. So to make it even brighter, I'm now going over <laughs> with this teal, just having fun, just getting it on the paper. Now, as usual at this stage in the painting, I really do not have a plan for where it's going to go other than the colors that I want to use. In my head right now, if you were in my head, you'd see that what I'm really focusing on is how I'm feeling moving this around. I'm not focused on where I'm going to place things or when I'm going to introduce the other colors. I rely on the painting to tell me when it's time to add something more. I know that sounds crazy, but I truly trust my intuition when it comes to this. Remember, I make art for me primarily, first and foremost, I make it for me. And if I don't feel good while I'm doing it, I'll stop. So I need to be able to trust my intuition so I can go on. And I hope that you allow yourself to trust your intuition when you're painting. So that uh, piece of paper that I have in that, that corrugated paper actually came inside of a box of cookies that I received during the holidays. And the corrugated pattern is just making a nice little nod to texture, nod to organized texture on this painting. Again, who knows if we'll even be able to see this later on, but I just like adding these things in now. They're like artifacts that will make up the sum total of the painting at the end 
but for right now, it's just fun and playful. And uh, this is generally not a good idea. Please don't put your paintbrushes in your mouth. So you can see on the side that I have a gel plate and I very frequently use the gel plate as my palette just for this purpose. You never know when you're gonna get a great pull. And if you can see over to the side there, I absolutely love that pull. That will be gorgeous in some other piece someday. And here I am just throwing down some airbrush medium. I use airbrush medium sometimes in place of water when I really want the color that I'm going to be applying to adhere and not get so watered down that the integrity of the paint changes. But what I'm going to do now is sprinkle this graphite powder over the painting. And if you recall many videos back when I did the Benjamin Moore Colors of the Years, one of the paintings that I did, I did this technique here, which was sprinkling the powder into a very wet surface and then letting that set up. And I just loved the uh, hmm, ethereal type quality that that created. And I love it here. So I'm just going on top of it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to separate, create surface tension between the airbrush medium, the isopropyl alcohol, and the paint. And so when, it, when you do that, it fisheyes, and you'll be able to see better in a moment. But I think the fisheying creates a really cool effect and a really cool texture. And this here is just of the Seth Apter uh, is inks. I, um, it'll be down in the description. Everything will be down in the description. I just wanted a light shimmer of gold. That was the gold mine. Um, you can barely see it. It probably was unnecessary, but it was there and I like using it. So I put it in there. And uh, I thought I would go in. This is, this is where things start getting a little, let me put it this way. This is when I start to realize that I'm not loving the painting as it's shaping up right now. So I thought I would go in and add some marks with these um, oil pastels. Now I know. Technically, you are not supposed to paint acrylic over oil. And uh, if I were worried about the longevity of this piece, um, I wouldn't do that. Most likely I wouldn't do that. Uh, but I'm just exploring and experimenting. I really, I don't mind if, if paint chips off over this, I'm not going to be upset. I, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this piece <laughs> the way that I'm feeling about it right now, truthfully, in the moment, is I'm half ready just to quit it. But I'm not going to quit it. And the reason why I'm not going to quit it is two things. One, I hope from this channel that one of the things that you get out of it, if you watch regularly, is to not quit on your artworks. Just because on one given day it's not working the way you want it to, or not going in a direction that you like, put it off to the side, go back to it later, go back to it a week later, a year later. So I'm feeling better about this right now, now that I've made these marks. It's breaking up some of the heaviness, I guess, that I was feeling with it. Uh, I just sprayed a little bit of water over the oil pastels 
and uh, it's smearing them just a, a touch, just taking the edge off, making them just a little bit softer. I don't really know why I wanted them to be a little softer at this moment, but I did. And I'm, I'm happy with the way they are. But I'm not really excited about this painting yet. And so I think it's time for me to do something about that. <laughs> and here I, uh, I snapped the lid closed on the quinacridone magenta and it splattered all over my face. <laughs> so... Problem solving in art usually equals keep going. And that's what I'm going to do here. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to get out of this, but I am going to keep going until I find something that I can attach good creative feelings to. To get into the qualities from the small piece from the other day that I really liked, there was quite a bit of a feel of that purplish, bluish melding of colors. And so I wanted to get some of that in here. Uh, so I'm going over some of the marks and this is the catalyst wedge that I'm using and I'm using a lot of water here. A lot of water. Now the lower layers are protected from, from all of this water that I'm using. It's largely protected because I use the airbrush medium and that is a medium and once it dries it, it seals to a large degree it seals what's below it so I can go over this confident that I'm not going to lose the paint that's below um, and the truth is is that the fluid acrylic colors the way that I'm using them I'm I'm applying them really thinly to begin with and then hitting them with the water so they are staying very transparent and uh, so I still have that sense of dark below and this is too wet, so I'm just taking, this is actually a piece of regular tissue paper. This is not wet strength tissue paper, it's just regular tissue paper. And I wanted to see if I could pull it first off without it tearing, and I did. But look at this, I love this. This is going to dry so beautifully and I'll be able to use it for something later. So don't be afraid to make things out of the thing that you're making that is not the thing you're making. <laughs> Follow that logic for a second. All right, so I'm getting a nice blend of all these colors and I'm going to pull a print here, get that uh, palette cleaned off a bit before I head into the next direction. Now, as this purple is drying, Mm, it's drying really faint and flat, frankly. So I'm going in now with, uh, this is a Nova Metallic. I believe it's antique gold. I'll, I'll list it in the supplies below. Um, I wanted to create some veining not to try to recreate marble by any stretch, but just create some veining of this uh, metallic color to give some lift to the painting. Everything is, it's feeling so very one-dimensional. Not that I want it to be three-dimensional, but I do want it to have areas that feel like they're lighter, uh, more airy, and areas that are grounded and darker. If you are enjoying this, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel. When you do that, it lets me know what kind of creative projects you're interested in. I'm still not really in love with this. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to go have some lunch and uh, see what happens. Back from lunch.
And I decided during lunch to take this in a bit of a different direction. I enjoyed the marks that I laid down earlier. You can still see them, but I wanted something more prominent. And so I just jumped right in with both feet and I, <laughs> I made these big marks. And I wasn't happy with that. The marks that I made there, that again is that um, Nova, I think it's antique gold, and uh, mixed with some zinc white. And I just thought, okay, getting some light colors on it would give this painting some lift and some dimension. And I think I'm right about that as I'm going in and putting little marks of teal even directly on top of the white and the metallic. Um, and I'm enjoying this. This is reminding me of a couple things. Now, if you saw my gift wrap video from oh, two or three months ago, one of the pieces of gift wrap that I did was an exercise of just going over and over and over and over with the marks. And it was meditative for me and I really enjoyed that. And so I think I'm calling on that experience as reference here. Uh, I don't typically do paintings with mark making like this in this kind of scale. I, I mean, this is, first off, there's a lot of marks going on here and they're much larger than marks that I typically make, which makes sense also because the painting itself is larger than the paintings that you normally see me do on here. Also, you may know I'm a big fan of creating marks for use in collage later. So not directly onto a painting, actually on paper that will be collaged into something else. So this is this is an experience for me. I'm exploring how I feel about it. Uh, I'm letting my intuition guide me in terms of which colors to do and when, and frankly, where to place the, the marks. So even though the painting the other day did not have any yellow in it, last week's painting did, and I really loved that yellow. And so I thought I'd bring some in here and I'm liking the yellow. Again, it's adding more, hmm, more dimension. It's certainly adding some playfulness and lightness to this piece. And as I create the marks, I'm feeling much better, actually much better about the bottom layers. And just using a brayer here to soften the edges of the marks as I go. And again, I learned that by doing it, by just experimenting and exploring with a brayer and some ink. I laid them down on a piece of paper in little dots and then went over it with the brayer and I loved what it did. I mean, not only did it move the ink around, but it made the edges of it soft and I liked it. And so I just put that in my memory bank as part of visual language that I enjoy. And if, if I could express anything to you as an artist, you as a creative, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for a long time, keep a record in your head, keep an art journal for the discoveries that you make that make you happy, that make you feel good while you're doing them. Because you'll want to incorporate them later on when you're working on a piece like I am that is not going the way you wanted it to, or it's really not going in any direction at all. And you can pull these things out and use them like I am. I'm actually really starting to enjoy this piece. I have never done a painting where the entire painting <laughs> was, was marks. But I'm seeing a lot of things in here that make me think of other pieces I've seen in the world. I mean, there's certainly a little 
tiny bit of this that's speaking to water lilies. There's a little tiny bit of this that's speaking to artists like Betty Franks. I'm enjoying what is occurring here, even though this is not my normal style. It's not my normal technique. As you can see, I'm using two paintbrushes now. I'm having the time of my life. I'm just going in and putting color in spots. This is like an adult version of finger painting. <laughs> Remember last week I said the best things that you've ever learned about creativity you learned while you were a toddler? There you go. This is just a more uh, elevated level of finger painting. I want to share with you what I have in mind here. I'm finishing this up for today. I don't know if this is done or not, and I want you to tell me if it's done or not. Here's what I'm going to do. Next week at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I am going to go live. I mean live live on here on YouTube, and I'm going to finish this painting if you tell me to. Right, so I want you to tell me in the comments below if you want me to continue on with this painting and finish it, or if you think it's finished now. Either way, I'm going to be on here live next week, but I want you to tell me whether we're going to be finishing this painting together or not. I would love for you to be here to chat with me live I'm going to be looking right at the camera and talking to you. So I invite you to come and be here with me next week, okay? And be sure to let me know what you want me to do, whether to go on with this painting or to leave it alone. Thanks so much for being here.